medical schools are not looking for one, the, the perfect applicant who woke up and got 528 on day one. I'll be back for some more MCAT podcast. How are you doing today? Doing great. Awesome. Awesome. Excited to continue our MCAT 101 series, I'm hoping. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Why not? Things to talk about. <laughs> All right. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, shocker, not everyone does well on the MCAT the first time they take it. Yeah. And many people out there have this weird kind of thought weird, I think, kind of thought, <laughs> that if I have to retake the MCAT, I shouldn't even apply to medical school, that the medical schools just aren't going to take me seriously because I had to retake it, and that's a sign of weakness, and I'm a failure. What is the first thing you say to a student who comes to you and says, Ali, I failed, my, MK my, my, my physician dreams are over? That's... So it's just a test. Medical schools know it's just a test. Everybody knows it's just a test. It's not, uh, and this test does not define you as a student and it definitely doesn't define you as a person. So you, you're not a failure because you didn't do well on the MCAT the first or, or even the second time. It just, needs, it just means that you need to change the way you approach the test mm -hmm. and prep in a different way. Sometimes we don't do well just because it didn't go well. Like we had a bad day and there are minimal changes to be made to go go and do well the next time. And sometimes that fundamentally, the way you studied for the MCAT is just didn't work for you, did not give you the results you want. Mm. And now is the time for you to, again, rethink everything and start from the beginning. Um, either way, it's not going to affect your like ability to get into medical school as long as you improve your score. Obviously, you're retaking the test just to get a more competitive score that will get you into medical school. Like I try, I try to tell my students, let's aim for a score high enough to make medical schools forget about the first one. <laughs> so I they like want it. to forget about the first one. All you have to do is give them a reason to forget about it. Mm -hmm. So um, medical schools are not looking for one, the, the perfect applicant who woke up and got 528 on day one. Um, they are looking for people who will be successful in medical school. Yeah. It might take them more than one try, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. If medical schools were looking for that perfect 528 on day one, uh, uh, there's a lot of empty seats in medical school <laughs> yes. classrooms. <laughs> we'll have one medical school in the country. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll only need one. And we'll only graduate uh, about three maybe <laughs> students a year. Uh, it, it'll be hard. I don't know. So maybe a little bit more than that. But yeah. Um, Step one, breathe, right? Yes. It's one test or two or three, right? There, there are a lot of students out there who really struggle with the MCAT yeah. and, and potentially make the same mistakes over and over again. One of the most common things that I see, Ali, is students take the MCAT. They know they didn't do well, just kind of, no in air quotes because subjectively we're horrible at knowing really how we did and they are just maybe they go back and they're studying waiting that month until the score comes out they get their score the the truth is they didn't do well they go and they register for the next available mcat in a month and then they don't do well again what does that look like yeah and now they have a big problem so let's say that I registered for the January test. Mm -hmm. Exactly the situation you're talking about. Once I get my, my score on in February, I found a seat for the March test. Took it in March, didn't go that well. Now I'm only allowed to take it one more time during the year because yeah. you're allowed to take the MCAT only three times in a calendar year, seven times lifetime. Yep. So now you put yourself in a situation where if it doesn't go well the third time in May, then we, I'm not applying this cycle. Maybe I'm, I have to wait a year to apply for the next cycle. Yep. So if 
what you want to do is, and that's what I tell my students, put some distance between you and that test score. Like I got my test scores, it didn't go that well. Let's let's take let's put a week between us and tests and test day and not make an emotional decision that I need to take the MCAT next time. <laughs> yeah. So let's sit down and talk about what went wrong the first time and what work we need to do in order to get there, in order to get to uh, a better score. Sometimes it might be we get to the decision that, yeah, one month is enough to get us there. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes it's not. Oftentimes it is, let's spend more time to study it. And yeah. let's, instead of registering for March test date, let's, let's aim for maybe early May test date. Yep. This gives us more time to, again, plan, like have a different plan, have a different approach for, for how we studied and see if things work differently. A bad MCAT doesn't tell the medical school anything other than you had a bad day taking the MCAT. Yes. Having two bad MCATs a month apart tells the medical school that maybe you have some judgment issues. Yes. Right? Yeah. It tells a different story than just having a bad test. Yeah. So bad MCATs three months apart, maybe you have like some um, like content issues you need to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some like approach issue or practice issue that you needed to deal with. But bad MCATs one month apart, it means you didn't do well and you weren't aware of the reasons why you didn't do well. And you rushed into a second one without without having a plan. You just like went for a second MCAT. Yeah. And that tells like a danger, you're, you're getting yourself in a dangerous situation on medical schools now having a, a negative opinion of your application. Yeah. So. Take your time. Don't make emotional decisions. You want to make a decision based on, uh, and honestly, like I'm, I'm gonna throw it in there. Don't let anybody else make the decision for you. Yeah. So like your a lot of time, <laughs> like your parents. Yeah. Like, your parents. like uh, I don't want to be like say it like blunt, <laughs> but um, it, your parents, like a lot of students, their parents, like they love them and they want them to do well, and they, they think that like. The world of their kids and like my parents thought like i was the smartest person on earth yep. and like if i didn't do well on the test they'll say oh if you take it tomorrow you're gonna ace it it's not like oh you need a week to to maybe readjust and study it in a different way uh, so don't make an emotional decision and make sure you are making your own decision not me not your parents not your tutor just you yeah your tutor is there to give you advice they have experience but it's, it's up to you to make that decision. How is a student supposed to know how much time they should take to restudy and retake the MCAT? Yeah, that's, that's a very important aspect of retaking the test. I think the first thing to, to look at is the score gap that you need to, to bridge. So let's say I took the the test, I got a 502, I'm aiming for a 512. That's a 10 point increase that I don't think is doable in a like four week span. Unless that that's that's the second factor. Why did your score, why was your score low on the first test? So if it was, I was practicing in the 512 to 516 range, but on test day I had the flu and I got a 502. Then I would expect a month of prep might be enough to get you back to the range minus the flu. Um, but otherwise, you probably need more time. So one is the score increase you're looking for. And two is what went wrong the first time. Okay. Um, so a student who is on blueprint exams scoring 510, 515 on their full length exams. They switch to the AAMC exams. They're in that same range, 512, 515, 517. They take the MCAT and they get a 505. I've heard from others that that student knows how to do well on the MCAT. They just had a bad day and maybe that's the rare exception of go take the MCAT as soon as you can. Yeah. 
on um, so there, there there are a couple of reasons other than you had a bad day here that we need to to look at like one is is this test anxiety is this that when i'm sitting home by myself i do great but mm -hmm. when i'm taking the real thing uh it it does affect me and you can look at the is there a history of test anxiety in here is there like your Let's look at your ACTs or SATs. Did you have a similar situation where you were practicing at this level and you were like 10 points lower or the equivalent of 10 points lower for, for these tasks? Mm. If that's the case, I don't know if four weeks or one month is enough. Maybe we need to look at how to like alleviate this test anxiety. But um, if that's not, if, if it's not test anxiety and just had a bad day, then yeah, it is, I think, go register for the test right away. Okay. On retaking the test, and, and I think maybe we talked about this in another 101 uh, series, one of the biggest complications that comes from needing to retake the test is reusing practice tests and, and maybe a false sense of reassurance that the student is ready to go take the test again. How can a student reassure themselves that they're ready to take the test again when they're looking at those full length exams, maybe for the second time or third time, if, if this is their third time taking the test. Yeah, this is this is a big issue. Um, because again, there's there are only four AMC practice tests. And for a lot of students, you this is the only resource you have. So you have to repeat them. So I would I would throw the score out. The score might not be as reliable as when you saw it the first time. Um, especially if you have, if you're repeating the test within a month or two of taking the MCAT the first time. If possible, try to take more practice exams. So a lot of our students take three or four of the blueprint exams and then switch to AMC. So they have seven remaining full length exams that they can repeat. Um, I, would, I would try to get fresh exams, even if you're repeating a couple of AMCs, I'll try to get fresh exams to see that the progress I'm making is good. Okay. But I will dig deeper into, instead of looking at the, I'm repeating a test, instead of looking at the score, I will look at more of the analytics, the breakdown of what questions I, I'm getting wrong this time. Hmm. Um, some of it is subjective. Did you, did you remember the passages or not? If you remember them, then you should take the score with a big grain of salt. Uh, big, big grain of salt. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So lots of things to think about when it comes to needing to retake the test. Let's throw in just a, a small little caveat to, to retaking the test. <laughs> and that is in the heat of the moment during a test, the student's mind saying, oh my gosh, I'm doing horrible. I should just void and retake. What are your thoughts there? Uh, this... Uh... Usually, hopefully, we're not going to get ourselves in this situation to begin with. Yeah. The general advice is don't void your tests unless something huge and catastrophic happens. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I, I was sick and I left like 30 questions blank. Void your test. If you thought the test was hard, don't void it. And um, like my, my personal anecdote there is, I don't know if you know this, um, the, the LSAT, at least when I took my LSAT, uh, they they give you the test. When you get your scores, they give you your actual test. You can read the, go through the exam. Oh, wow. Yeah, they publish them. So when I took my LSAT, I thought, oh my God, I was midway through it and I was saying, this is the hardest practice test I've seen. And I practiced <laughs> with real LSATs before. And my Four weeks later or three weeks later when I got my score, like I was flipping through the test. I was like, this is one of the easiest practice tests in the last two years. Uh, but th the way you feel about the difficulty of the exam will always be colored by the anxiety of taking the real test. So yeah. one, don't void your test. Now, if you void it, what I would do is I would go back home and I would write down like, obviously don't write down the actual questions. That's just not allowed by, <laughs> by AMC. Just, I would write down like what went wrong today. Mm. Like it could be that what I panicked and I couldn't get my brain to focus on reading the passages. Then 
we we should deal with this and you should retake as soon as possible. You don't yeah. have a content or strategy or approach issue. You just panicked on test day yeah. and voided the copy. Um, or if like m- I didn't know a lot of the content or I didn't know how to, I had a big timing issue on all four sections, mm-hmm. then don't rush into retaking the AMCAT. You have a timing issue that we need to, we need to handle. And Hopefully, if you have a timing issue, the severe, you will catch it during your practice exams. So that's why we filmed the whole episode of take a lot of full length exams to catch these issues before you have to void your test score. Yeah. All right. So is there anything else about retakes we haven't talked about yet? Um, I think the most important part for retake is show that you can improve on the tests. Um, the bigger the improvement, the better, the better, obviously, but, um, I would say try to improve, like aim to improve by more than four points, mm. just because when you take the MCAT, uh, they give you your score, but they also give you a range, a confidence interval. Yeah. Like you got five or six. That means your score is between, let's say five, five or four and five or eight. Yeah. Then you take the second one and you go, you get five or nine then you're between 507 and 511. Yeah. Then medical school will say maybe you're in the middle. Yeah. So when those maybe confidence you're ranges overlap. Yeah. Exactly. But if you improve enough that, that those confidence intervals don't overlap, then you're kind of nudging the schools to look at that second score. Yeah. To say that maybe that first score is the outlier. Maybe that first score does not count. I had a bad day. And if you get to the interview stage, it's very easy to spin that as I yeah. had a bad day. But when your scores are close, then it's going to be harder for you to advocate or or harder for medical school to neglect that lower score. 